Welcome to lesson 5 for the OCR 21st Century Science Revision videos on Unit P4, which is Explaining Motion. In this video we're going to look at how we describe motion and we're going to define some terms. So the first thing we're going to look at is the idea of distance and displacement. Two different terms which are often confused. So, distance normally measured in metres or kilometres and displacement also normally measured in metres or kilometres but also with something slightly extra. So let's just take an example. If you are going on a journey and you're going for a walk you might end up going from A to B and that journey might be a walk of say six kilometres in total. So the distance that you have travelled is six kilometres. However, you could consider another measurement, which is how far have you gone overall in a straight line from A to B? So this distance here from A to B in a straight line is called the displacement. So the displacement might be just uh, two kilometers, for example. So while you've traveled a total distance of six kilometers, your overall displacement in a straight line from one point to the other is two kilometers. So the displacement is defined as the straight line distance and direction between two points. So the thing about displacement is that it also includes a direction. So the displacement here would be say two kilometers and I'm going to say that direction is roughly uh, north east ish okay so displacement normally includes direction but it's also a distance but it's the straight line distance between two points whereas the distance is the total amount of distance covered so that's distance versus displacement so speed now speed of an object uh, can be thought of in two ways. We can think of the average speed or the instantaneous speed. I always spell this wrong, so forgive me. Instantaneous. Apologies for that. So, average speed versus instantaneous speed. So if you imagine this journey of six kilometers, now if this was a journey you're walking, some bits might be uphill, some bits might be downhill. So at any one instant, your speed might be, say, who knows, uh, three kilometers an hour. Or another point in the journey, it might be six kilometers an hour if you're walking particularly fast. But your average speed is all of those variations averaged out over the whole journey. So the average speed is calculated by the distance travelled divided by the time taken. So let's just say that on this journey the distance travelled was six kilometres and the time was two hours, which gives an average speed of six kilometres per hour. Notice that I use the units from the question to get my speed. If I'm measuring in kilometres and hours, my speed is kilometres per hour. Uh, if I use miles or metres or centimetres or millimetres, then that would change. So the units for speed always come from the units given to you uh, to describe the distances and the times. So, oops, I can't divide 6 by 2, can I? 3. So the average speed for this journey of 6 kilometres over 2 hours was about 3 kilometres per hour. However, the instantaneous speed is the speed at one particular point. And as I said, if the average was, average was 3, at some places they could have been doing 6 kilometres per hour, at other places they could have been doing 1 kilometre per hour. It's the instant uh, that the speed is measured at, which is the instantaneous speed, whereas the average speed is the total distance divided by the total time. So all those variations are evened out. 
Okay, so distance, displacement, and speed. Let's look at velocity. Now, velocity is similar to speed, but in the same way you've got distance, which is just how far you've travelled, whereas displacement has the distance and the direction, then so we have the difference between speed and velocity. So velocity includes the direction of travel. So the velocity is normally given as the displacement divided by the time. And again, velocity will normally include direction. I think one of the key things to remember is the idea that if we've got two objects that are moving, let's say one is moving this way and another object might be cars on opposite side of the roads or cyclists, these two things may have the same speed, let's say these two bikes are going at 10 metres per second, their speed is equal because they've both got the same speed of 10 metres per second but because they've got opposite directions and their velocities are actually opposite to each other. So for these two same speed but velocities will be different. I'm just going to veer into a little bit of um, maths here. Um, one way to describe two things that are moving opposite to each other is to give one of them a negative number. So we can say that the speed of that is 10 let's call that one A and the speed of B is also 10 but the velocity of A is plus 10 and the velocity of B is minus 10. And so we can see they've got a difference in their, uh, in their velocities by this minus number. And the minus only normally applies when you've got two things that are travelling completely opposite directions to each other. Um, and it could be vertical or it could be horizontal. But look out for that. Same speed, but the velocities must be different if they're travelling in different directions. So then we're going to look at acceleration. So now acceleration is when velocity changes. And so if the velocity changes in an object, that means acceleration is taking place. Now because velocity includes direction and speed, then there's two ways to accelerate. You can accelerate by changing speed, speeding up or slowing down, or you can accelerate by changing direction. Now this is a more subtle idea, um, but it's worth exploring and uh, it gives you a much better idea of how things move. So if I speed up, I'm accelerating. If I slow down, I'm also accelerating. I'm accelerating negatively or against the direction I'm going. If I change direction, I'm also accelerating. So that's a really key idea to remember. If a car or an object is going round a corner or changing direction, even if its speed is constant, because its direction is continually changing, so this one is going this way and this way then this way, because the direction changes, then it must be accelerating. So, acceleration equals change in velocity divided by time taken. So if that's a bit squished. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by the time taken. So acceleration is a measure of how quickly your velocity is changing. So if your velocity changes very rapidly, then you've got a high acceleration. If your velocity changes very gradually, then your acceleration is much lower. If your acceleration is zero, that means your velocity is not changing, so you're going at a steady speed. OK, just to recap then, from the beginning, describe emotion, some key words. The distance is how far you've gone on a journey. The displacement is the straight line distance between two points. 
that you've traveled and it includes the size and the direction. We call it a vector quantity because we can represent it with an arrow and it's got two pieces of information. Speed uh, can either be the average speed or the instantaneous speed. And then velocity, just like displacement, is a vector quantity, i.e. it's got a size and it's got a direction. It's represented by two pieces of information. And we have acceleration, which is also a vector quantity because it can be positive or negative. Uh, you can accelerate positively to speed up or you can accelerate negatively to slow down. And your velocity will change if you're accelerating. Now because velocity includes speed and direction, there's two ways that you can accelerate. You can accelerate by changing your speed or by changing your direction. And your acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the time. Now the units for acceleration are given as meters per second squared. Now that is the unit for acceleration. It comes from the fact that, for example, speed is measured in meters per second and then that's divided by time. So you've got meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Now people often feel they should, for some reason, square the numbers in their answers because there's a squared on there. That is just a unit to remember. You calculate acceleration by just putting the numbers into this formula. Uh, we'll look more at how we deal with those calculations in the video, uh, which is all about calculations.